Here I'm going to present the equations that we need to derive outlet conditions from an adiabatic flash drum where we have a two component feed and so we're going to need energy balance, we're going to need mass or material balances, and we're going to need Rowlett's Law. So we're assuming ideal solution just for this demonstration, but the same ideas apply if it's not an ideal solution. So let's look at the situation that we're talking about. We have a flash drum. We have a feed where F is going to be a flow rate, moles per second. And then some of this is going to be leaving as vapor. Again, that's a flow rate. Some is going to be leaving as liquid. The mole fraction of component 1 coming in we'll call Z1. The mole fraction of that component in the liquid phase, X1 in the vapor phase, Y1, and the temperature coming in, we'll call Tn, and then the temperature leaving is the same for liquid and vapor because we're assuming they're in equilibrium. And so the material balance and overall balance is whatever flows in must leave in either the vapor phase or liquid phase. And then if we do a balance on one of the components, so let's do it in component one, so mole fraction of component 1 times the molar flow rate is the number of moles component 1 flowing in. And then Y1 times V is how much of component 1 leaves in the vapor phase. X1 times L is how much it leaves in the liquid phase. We're assuming ideal solution, and therefore we're going to use Raoult's Law to relate the mole fractions in the liquid and the vapor phase. And so Raoult's Law says the mole fraction component 1 in the liquid phase times the saturation pressure, mole fraction component 1 in the vapor phase times the total pressure. And of course there's the same equation, same type equation, but for component 2, and these are independent equations. And of course to use these we, need, we don't know the temperature. And keep in mind, this is going to be at the outlet temperature. And so the temperature is related to the saturation pressure. And so we're essentially solving for the temperature, solving all these equations simultaneously. So we, we're going to need Antoine's equations for both component 1 and component 2. And so Antoine's equation, remember, is going to apply at the outlet condition, the outlet temperature, which is something we have to solve for. And so we also need an energy balance. So write an energy balance per time. Keep in mind it's adiabatic, so Q is zero. So essentially the enthalpy, total enthalpy of the feed, say, per second. We use total to distinguish it from enthalpy per mole. Some of that enthalpy leaves in the liquid phase, and the rest leaves in the vapor phase. So now we need to write down equations for each of these terms. So for the feed, let's write it first in terms of number of moles of component 1 in the feed, which is Z1 times F, that's the molar feed rate of component 1, times the heat capacity of component 1. And then for component 2, the same type term. And I'm going to write this enthalpy as T minus T reference, where I can pick a reference temperature. This is liquid, so these heat capacities are heat capacities for the liquid. Also remember, we can pick a reference temperature however we want, as long as we use it everywhere the same. And so if I write now enthalpy of the liquid phase leaving, again, this is a total enthalpy, it's going to be the moles of component 1 times the heat capacity plus the moles of component 2. Again, this is all per time times the heat capacity, the outlet temperature minus the reference temperature. So again, these are liquid heat capacities, and perhaps we should do that to distinguish. These are all liquid heat capacities. Well, the final term we need is the enthalpy of the vapor, and this is going to be a little different. And there's multiple ways we could write this, but let's write it as, again, the moles vapor leaving per time. And 
And so let me write this as, and I'll explain why, heat capacity of liquid plus the moles component 2 in the vapor phase times the liquid heat capacity component 2. The outlet temperature minus the reference temperature. And now, of course, this is a vapor phase, and I've used liquid heat capacities, and I'm not finished yet, but the idea is that we can envision, so using enthalpy, that we first took the amount of liquid, excuse me, the amount of vapor that's leaving, first took it as a liquid, raised it from the feed temperature to the outlet temperature, and that's what this term is, and then we vaporized it. So now we have to add two terms, and one is for it's the number of moles of component 1 per time times its heat of vaporization, component 1, plus the number of moles component 2 times its heat of vaporization. So these terms now added together, this heat of vaporization would be evaluated at the outlet temperature. Heat of vaporization can certainly change with temperature, same as here, and so we envision we took the liquid, raised its temperature to the outlet temperature, or we took the fraction that's going to be vapor and raised the outlet temperature, and then we vaporized it. Nowhere here do we worry about the enthalpy of mixing, and that's because we assumed ideal solution, so the enthalpy of mixing is going to be zero. And I guess the final term that we would need is we have to know the outlet pressure, right? And then that's going to be related to the saturation pressures. And, of course, they're related to the temperature, the outlet conditions. And so we typically set this, and now we calculate the flow rates leaving, the mole fractions leaving, and the outlet temperature by solving all these equations simultaneously.